Think of your platonic ideal of an arcade racing game. Like your outruns, your ridge racers, your F-Zeros. What's the core mechanic of those games? I mean, just like really, really boil down to the most simplistic idea. I think it's about speed. I, I think it's about getting from point A to point B as fast as possible. That's probably obvious. But if we made a game that was just like, you know, you have full control of your speed and you just press this button and you go faster and you release it to go slower and that's all there is, that's not particularly interesting, right? And if we take a look at some racing games, we can see that they've got plenty of stuff going on. The player is usually contending with the course, like navigating turns, or they're steering around opposing AI vehicles, or they're using items, or they're boosting, and on and on and on. So I think when we're talking about what should go into a racing game, we're thinking about what additional aspects we can introduce that makes, you know, go from point A to point B real fast, a little more compelling than it otherwise would be. Often the job of a racing game, and, and this is probably true of a lot of games really, is to just get in the player's way, right? So speed is definitely the largest determining metric in a racing game, and the player basically always wants that number to be as high as possible all the time. So the game's role in this is to exist in opposition to the player, to find ways to depress that very important number. To use a metaphor from other games, the player's speed is sort of like a health bar, and the game is just attacking the player in various ways, which causes the player to lose speed. And yes, I recognize I'm bringing in like violence metaphors into a genre that has very little violence, possibly with the exception of burnout. And maybe that's a toxic thing to do, but just bear with me, I think it's a useful metaphor. But anyway, what's different between racing games and say like a fighting game or an action game is that the expectation in a racing game is the primary mechanics can be used to restore the player's health, restore their speed. The player has to battle back against the game by using whatever tools that we give them. So rather than just draining health and then it's game over, it's more of a back and forth with the final evaluation at the end. This is where I'm going to bring my Peek Away project in as an example because that's what got me thinking about how we can manipulate speed and how to build this tug of war between the game and the player. So in this game, you're a snowboarder, and I've represented speed here by this vertical meter to the left of the player to make some of these points easier to understand. And I had actually built this UI before I was thinking about this metaphor of like the player's speed being sort of like a restorable health thing. It actually happened differently. I just put this here because I needed an easily recognizable visual representation, representation of speed that was not just a number and I came up with this and then as I was playing the demo, I was like, oh, it's kind of like a restorable health thing. So anyway, yeah, in this game, you're a snowboarder and there's no accelerator in this game and there's no brakes. So at least, at least in this version, uh, acceleration always happens automatically up to some maximum. So you don't have to touch anything. Your player is just gonna go faster until it hits a max. So that's our baseline. Everything changes though, when the player launches off a ramp and into a jump. So in this case, we can imagine the real world analog of air resistance pushing back on our airborne fella here causing their velocity to gradually decrease. So this is one example of our game imposing a hardship on the player. It's a direct attack on their speed and their speed is reduced. Additionally, when the player hits the ground, their board is still angled upward from the jump, they'll end up taking some, you can think of it like hop damage uh, to the tune of 30% of their current speed. So here's our first two shots fired. One is the slow drag of air resistance when the player goes up in the, into a jump and the other is the punctuated deduction of speed when landing from a jump. I love that like multiplying one number by 70%, I, I'm calling that punctuated deduction. It's very academic sounding. Anyway, what tools can we give the player to counteract this and, and restore their speed, to let them restore their speed? So let's start from the second thing. So that 30%, our punctuated deduction, our speed penalty uh, when the player lands. This actually only happens if the player lands with their board at the wrong angle. And this is the mechanic that I stole from Excitebike and this is what I started the project with. The player can counter this penalty by aligning their board to the surface that they land on. If you land correctly, you avoid the penalty. Bullet dodged. 
no problem. But wait, we also talked about that air resistance and we didn't give the player any way to recover that speed. What we can do here is add an extra sort of advanced version of the same mechanic. The player can adjust the board angle at any point in the jump, but if they wait to make that adjustment until just before they land, not only do you not get hit with the 30% penalty, but instantly the max velocity will be restored. This is the counterattack to the air resistance drag. It's an extra optional bit of challenge with an extra bit of reward. I've been referring to this as speed pinning, like P-I-N. Uh, hopefully that's like not a bad word amongst the youths these days. It, it probably is, but I hope it's not. <laughs> anyway, we've, what we've done here is turn every jump, every ramp becomes this tiny battle in this ongoing speed war between the player and the game. The game is using air resistance to decrease speed and threatens an even further decrease if the player doesn't respond by adjusting their board angle. On the other hand, we've given the player the tools to completely counteract these things. I think there's some value in setting up these rules and then giving the player ways to bend or break the rules, and it gives them a little bit more power than the game has, or at least it feels like they have more power than the game does. And that's where the boost comes in. Lots of racing games have some sort of boost mechanic, and I think this is the reason why. It's part of that whole, like, make the player feel like they can outsmart the game, right? Make them feel like they can break the rules, that whole thing. So every three consecutive successful landings, uh, this gives the player one little nugget of boost juice. And when they decide to expend that juice, when they wheeze the juice, there are a couple of things uh, that will happen. The first thing is the player's maximum velocity increases beyond the normal limit. So they have the potential to go faster than they normally would. The second thing that happens is that their current velocity, regardless of what the current value is, if it's, even if it's zero, uh, it's immediately set to this new max velocity. So they're immediately going from whatever velocity to like something much, much faster. In earlier iterations of this, I only did the first thing. I only raised their max velocity and I just kind of let the automatic acceleration bring the player's velocity up to that new max. But I think it's more fun and just like more satisfying to automatically set the velo to the new max. It makes the boost feel like just a lot more like jarring in a good way. Um, especially if the player has just biffed a landing and their current velocity is like super, super low, like they're near zero. This gives them a way to, again, like break the rules a little bit. It digs themselves out of that hole really, really quickly, instantly, actually. And it lets them feel like they've gotten a leg up on the game by breaking one of the rules about speed. And much like we had that sort of speed pinning extra layer on top of our basic landing mechanic, you have to wonder if there's some way that we can give boosting an extra dimension. So it's, it's not just a button press, right? That just like immediately increases your velocity. W what else can we do with that? Um, I wanna like further the vibe of, again, giving the player um, more power than they think they should have, like making them feel like they're getting away with something, almost like they've found a bug. What I've come up with so far is uh, this, like boosting is time limited, which is to say, after you press the button to start a boost, you get about a second and a half of time with that elevated max velocity. And then it, when it wears off, your max velo goes back to the normal value. Here's where I think we find an opportunity to give the player another way to, to push back on the game's impositions of, of lowered speed. So if they successfully land a jump while they're boosting, the current boost is actually extended by another second. So what this means is if we design our levels well enough, which I'm finding is like a super huge pain in the neck, but anyway, if we design our levels well enough, the player can just chain one boosted jump after another and effectively extend the boost for the entire level, or at least like a pretty big chunk of it. Again, what we're doing here is we're introducing this rule of the engagement about your boost lasts, you know, just one second, but then we sort of slather on this extra layer that they can access, which lets them break that rule and feels like they're winning this, this war with the game. This is how I've set up the battle between the game and the player, right? It's all about speed at the core, but at the same time, it's, it's actually like a collection of stuff wrapped around that speed idea, which results in something like a game. I'm pretty sure this is something. It feels like something. I feel like it is. 
As for the project itself, I'm considering this version 0.3, and so I haven't posted it to Itch or the Pico 8 BBS yet, but I think I'm close to doing that, at least putting it up as a WIP sort of thing. Um, however, if you mess with GitHub, you can download it from the GitHub link in the description if you just want to try it in its current state. There are also previous versions there if you are curious how this has evolved. Thank you for your time and attention. I appreciate every second of it. I really, really do. I have been Eric. This has been Radical Slice. We'll catch you next time.